At one point, my extended essay supervisor said that my essay was so bamboozling that it was bedazzling, which is probably the best way I could have said that my essay was a hot mess. Hello and welcome back to Ivy Lilia. Today we're talking about the extended essay. Yes, a point of dread among many IB students, and I was not not one of those students. Basically, in a nutshell, my experience with the extended essay was so bad because I wrote my extended essay, left for six weeks, came back to a 7,000 word draft that was both a monster and garbage, and then was royally wrecked. So here are five things that you should never do with your extended essay to avoid having a horrific experience such as mine. Number one, don't pick a topic that's out of your wheelhouse. My research question was, how do expectation-based information and social comparative information influence consumers' perceptions of fairness of demand-based dynamic pricing in the hotel industry? It's a mouthful. My essay was in psychology, but really, truly, it was a business management essay. A big mistake I made was doing an interdisciplinary paper. I should have just done something that was in psychology, straightforward, easy. There was actual psychology research and not hospitality research parading as psychology research. So keep in mind that if you are trying to force a topic into a subject that it's really not a part of, it's going to be difficult. It's definitely doable and it's definitely interesting, but it's really hard. Pick something you really care about because you are going to have to think about this topic a lot. Make it easy for yourself. Make it easy in terms of being engaged, doing research, ensuring that you're not super stressed. Don't think that you need to reinvent the wheel with your topic. You should have a little bit of nuance so that there's not an exact paper answering exactly your research question, but you shouldn't think that you need to come up with something that there's no research on you're not gonna be able to write an essay. No one's expecting you to be the expert in this field. You're 17. So don't think that there are really lofty expectations for your topic selection. Keep it easy and keep it something that you can actually write to and actually have a really intelligent essay about. Mistake number two. Don't start writing your essay before you know exactly what you're going to do. Before you start writing, you need a simple, concise, table of contents, a really clear list of what evidence goes where, but also how you're going to utilize those ideas, what arguments you're going to make, how your topics are going to flow together. If you're only thinking about how you're going to cram in all your research, you're going to have a descriptive essay rather than an analytical one. As you're researching, and especially when you start writing, ensure that you know exactly how you're going to answer your research question. It is so important to think of the research question as guidance for your answer, which is your essay. I thought of the research question as a requirement that I just needed to put in my reflection document and not really think about when I was writing the essay. So because of that, I wrote my essay and then I went back and made my research question fit my essay. Because of that, my essay didn't really answer my question. So it took so many tries of rephrasing my research question, editing my essay and going back and forth before I had really answered my question. If you use that question as real guidance in your essay, your essay will be so much more cohesive and analytical because you've actually answered a question. It's not just ramblings about a topic. It is so important to remember what you want each paragraph of your essay to contribute to your overall argument. Ultimately, 4,000 words isn't a lot. So if you keep in mind what you want to do as you're planning, as you're writing, and as you're editing, it'll be so easy to understand what you're doing in that essay and how well you're accomplishing it. Mistake number three, don't start too early and don't edit far after you've written. So I waited six weeks between when I had written my essay in one sitting and when I had started editing. Or rather, when I had read my essay and then I waited even longer because I was so intimidated by that monster. Like the day after you've written your first draft, explain your topic and explain what you've tried to do 
to someone. Explain your argument and how you go through it. Just walk them through your essay without looking at your essay at all. Just talk about what you did. I thought this was so helpful. I thought it really helped me clarify my thoughts and how I wanted to approach my argument. Talking it through with someone was really beneficial towards editing my essay and understanding the nuance I wanted to achieve with my argument. Don't panic if your first draft isn't coming out the way you want it. Do not put that first draft on the back burner. Don't think, I'll come back to this and maybe I'll be in a better mood and the writing will be better. Your first draft is probably not going to be as coherent as you'd like. So if you wait and come back to it, there's a chance you might not understand what you meant, and then a whole segment of your argument is just gone. Number four, don't overlook grammar and topic sentences. Don't confuse bad grammar with bad ideas. I was so consumed with the idea that my argument was bad or it wasn't complex enough because I was getting upset that my grammar wasn't perfect. Your first draft grammar is not going to be the best you can do, but it is useful to go through and edit that because you'll feel more confident in your ideas if you're confident in your writing. If you're frustrated with the ideas in your essay, take a step back. Think, are you frustrated with the ideas or are you frustrated because your essay doesn't read right? You might be really frustrated with the grammar and not really the argument you're making itself. Mistake number five, don't overthink the extended essay and don't dread it. If you overthink your extended essay, it's not going to be right. It's never going to be exactly what you want. That's okay. It's okay to not have exactly the perfect essay you were dreaming about. Ultimately, you just need something that will help you pursue the IB diploma. It is fantastic practice, yes, but it shouldn't be your only practice in the IB program. You shouldn't be focusing all of your attention and energy on the EE. Ultimately, you'll realize that the extended essay isn't going to make or break your diploma. If you're watching this video, I assume you care about points and you care about your academic performance, you'll be fine. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you the extended essay was the most influential part of my IB experience. It wasn't, it didn't change my life. But you know, it helped me realize that I'm stronger than any academic assignment because every night I spent crying about how frustrating it was, I overcame. I submitted an essay that ultimately I was proud of, even if it wasn't the best thing I ever gave the IB to read. I hope this video was helpful. I really think that no matter what and no matter what struggles you're having with the extended essay, you can overcome it. If you would like more detailed advice about the extended essay, just let me know. I'm always happy to make content that will help you. So please let me know in the comments or DM me on Instagram at Ivy Lilia. Don't forget to subscribe. Of course I can't make you, but it would really help me and I'd really appreciate it. If you liked this video, then you might like some of my other ones, so you should check them out. And as always, I'll see you later.